Carol Ann and Anne Marie here again. We're super excited to share with you our continued journey in creating your own success. And of course, this is based off of Anne Marie's awesome book, What Self Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't. And as always, I will have the links, the images, everything you need to be able to check this book out for yourself. But Anne Marie is giving you, she is paying it forward by giving you these wonderful habits and breaking them down so that when you do read the book, you understand in depth what you need to do to create your own success. So let's continue. And of course, we have Anne Marie with us. She is our success guru. And today we are going to be talking about several things. One of them being challenging yourself. Now, Anne Marie, you talk about three ways to prepare for a challenge. And a lot of people have difficulty with embracing a challenge and knowing how to deal with it. Could you break that down for us today, please? Of course. Well, a challenge is doing something that pushes you. It is really using your potential to its fullest. And sometimes you feel like you're at the end of your rope when you have a real challenge. That's, it's like taking a rubber band and stretching it. And that is what it takes to succeed. If it were so easy, we would all be doing it. Let me tell you, so often there are times where I'm ready to throw in the towel and I have to remind myself, this is a challenge. It's how you look at what you are dealing to yourself, to yourself or what you are dealt with. Mm -hmm. So part of creating your own success is being challenged, I don't care if it's through a question, if it's through a project, it could be anything. This is one of the 52 secrets. Okay, and Marie, in your book, you mention in your three ways to prepare for a challenge, you talk about writing your challenges down and like to describe how to manage it, what they are. Could you give us a little bit of in-depth understanding of why this is so important to do? Sure. Well, first of all, when you see something, it is much more attainable. So when you know you're confronted with a challenge, the best way to manage it is step back and write down the challenges that you have been confronted with and then write down how you handle them. Typically, when you keep logic in the equation, it's so much easier. Mm. I'll give you an example, if I may. Yes. When I started my business, Carol Ann, 33 years ago, I knew how to train. I knew how to market. However, I had no idea about something called estimated taxes. I didn't even know that existed. And so the third month in business, we received an envelope. And I'm so naive. I thought it was a purchase order from the U.S. government. Oh. I opened it. I really did. I opened it and it was $1,500 bill. Well, I wasn't even able to pay myself at that point. And so the challenge was, how am I going to take care of this? So what I did is I wrote down, how am I going to manage it? What am I going to do? And I figured out a way without stealing, without borrowing, how to manage that challenge. And so the secret is, how do you manage a challenge? You write it down, figure out how you're going to get through it, and then use that as a roadmap the next time you're confronted with one. And yes, I pay those estimated taxes on time, and I realized that was my tuition for not being more thorough about what it takes to start a business. So that was a good lesson learned right there. It was a great lesson learned because it was ignorance. And the key is, it's not ignorance when you manage the challenge, when you're faced with it. The secret to manage challenges is take as much of your life and act rather than reacting. People see that what you're dealt with become challenges when you are not prepared for them. And so the few times that there are challenges, it's much easier to manage them because everything in, else in your life is in order and it helps you manage, gives you the confidence for handling what can be perceived as a hurdle. Now, one of the things, the third thing, if I may share, is this. If you are not confronted with a challenge, 
you're not moving your cheese. Mm -hmm. You're not stretching yourself enough. I tell you, there are so many times I'm one that loves to challenge myself and it becomes a love-hate relationship. When I sign a contract for a book and then I say to myself, are you really kidding? You're going to write this book in eight weeks. Have you lost your brain? Well, first of all, a challenge is what are you going to do to make it happen? The challenge is how are you going to do three things in one day when you know it's going to take every iota of energy? What you do is you ask yourself, what is it going to take to get the job done? Write it down, map it out, and then a challenge actually is no longer an obstacle. It becomes a roadmap for creating your own success. Mm, so true. And you go over some action steps in your book, and I really like them because they kind of get your feet wet to challenge yourself. Could you just quickly go over what some of those would be for us? Absolutely. What you do is when you challenge yourself, write it down and ask yourself, what are you doing to challenge yourself on an emotional basis? What are you doing to challenge yourself on an intellectual basis? So that means read more. If you're not interested in something, read about it, at least be exposed to it. What are you doing to challenge yourself on a physical basis? If you despise exercising, at least walk 10,000 steps a day. What are you doing on a spiritual basis? What are you doing to get in touch with your inner core? And so it's not the answer, it's the question that allows you to challenge yourself for creating your own success. So much of success is introspective. Mm. That's how you can be better to other people. And you have to be good to yourself before you are willing, before you actually have the strength to reach out and be pleasant to other people. And I couldn't agree more. I think this is one of the, the best keys in your book so far is, you know, getting yourself up for these challenges. You can't sit at home every day and not challenge yourself and expect to be successful. Exactly. It's not about you or me. It's about other people. That is the secret to success. And the key is, listen, I don't care how, whatever success means. Work-life balance is that success, whatever it is. When you give to other people, you feel so good. I'm not talking about money. You know, maybe you have an organization that you want to give to. I'm talking about your ear. I'm talking about advice. If it's something you've already done and you can give that person the confidence to move forward, that's what it is. Challenge yourself and then be accessible for other people and build them up. So true, so true. Now, in your next secret, you talk about um, ask until you get a yes. And we had kind of tripped over that a little bit before. Many people have difficulty asking. They're petrified to ask. Could you go over uh, an example from your book and then how to turn a no into a yes? Definitely. First of all, it's very easy to turn a no into a yes. If somebody's an entrepreneur working in a corporation or somebody's an entrepreneur reaching out to organizations, always end a conversation with a yes. Even if somebody has said, not interested, not now, not the right time. The way to do it is always have the last word. The last word can be sending a thank you, an email thank you, or somebody doing something over and above, sending a note and making sure that you say, Tell you what, right now it sounds like your service or your the product that you have is right for you. May I flag my calendar to contact you in six months to see how it's going? The person's going to say yes just to get you off his or her back. <laughs> That's a yes. Always end with a yes. That's the case. How about if we schedule time to get together in six months? That's the case. Yes. Always do something to make it positive because it leaves a better feeling for you. And the person will know that you are sincere about connecting with him or her. I'll give you an example. Yes. I got a phone call yesterday as a result of doing the New York, the Javits Center Small Business Expo last week. And people were prospecting me. Well, I, you know, I'm not particularly interested in joining some organizations. However, I made sure I gave the person, I said, please send me information so that when the time is right, I can go ahead and participate in your chamber. 
-hmm. And I said, and I'd like to give you a few people who you may want to reach out to who've recently moved to the city and might be terrific members. My point is always leave a good taste in someone's mouth so that they feel confident. They feel like they can also be given a yes and give a yes to others. So once again, we call that turning a no into a yes. So I did not do what this person wanted by joining this particular group. However, what I did do is give him something that he had to work with. And so this is what it's about. Turn no's into yeses. For some of us, it's part of our constitution. Mm -hmm. I have to have the last word for better or worse. And so I do get people to say yes, even if it's sending a note to say, thanks for understand we may not be the right fit for you. However, I would definitely like to follow up to see how your meeting went with my competitor, because I know that he has a lot to offer and I'm sure he'll do a great job with your group. That's a yes. That's showing good sportsmanship. Shaking hands is a yes to say, I respect you. This is what it is about. You always keep your bar high. Let people know you're confident. And that's eventually why they will want to work with you. That's great. I love that. Um, then you go into luck. And that's a big topic. Um, some people believe in luck. Other people don't. They think it's a bunch of superstitious nonsense. But let's talk about luck and, and how do you see that connected to success, Anne-Marie? You, you go over six strategies, too. We'll get to those next. But what do you see between, like, the, the correlation between a person's luck or how they perceive luck and their success? Well, first of all, creating your own luck is all about how you handle situations. I mentioned in this book, I interviewed 30 people who came from nothing Mm. I, for instance, Mickey Redwine is amazing. He lived in a tin house growing up. He's from Texas. He wore clothes that he was embarrassed by when he was little. He had hand-me-downs. They didn't fit. Mickey is amazing. Mickey lost more money in the world coming, the Enron scandal, than anybody else. Oh. And he built himself up, mm. and he did it again. Now, so many of his competitors who have fiber optics businesses, which is what Mickey did for his claim to fame, have said that he's lucky. Well, Mickey shakes hands. That's how he creates contracts. And people think that it's just because he's lucky. Mickey said, you're right. I'm very lucky. I create my own luck. There's no one who works harder than him. So luck means persistence, being prepared, doing whatever it takes to get the job done, going over and above. This is what it's about. It's not what the, what's written, the piece of paper it's written on. It's the relationship that you form. That's creating your own luck. It's being good to other people so that they will want to interact with you. That's the name of the game. Yeah, because um, I'm sure you, you run into a lot of people, so they'll, they'll always say, oh, I'm not lucky, I'm so unlucky. And it's that negative thinking, too, that, you know, holds you back from creating success. Right, Anne-Marie? Of course. You know, when somebody says that to me, I say, I have a book for you. Zig Ziglar's book, See You at the Top. Zig Ziglar talks about an AA, an attitude adjustment. There's always a pony inside. You can have a room full of manure. It's either a lot of manure or when you keep digging, there is a pony inside. So the secret is... It has, it's your attitude, not your aptitude, that determines mm -hmm. your altitude. We mm -hmm. said that before. These are words of Zig Ziglar. And so, again, creating your own luck is being ready. It's listening to yourself, listening to your inner core. What is it that you have that you know that you can share with others? That's creating your own luck. And once again, we've said this how many times just during this YouTube uh, video cast pay it forward. Yes. When you're good to other people, you're going to get it back. Recreate. You can lose everything. Recreate your fortune by, and fortune is your mental, your physical, mm -hmm. your spiritual, your emotional fortune. Be consistent. Be diligent. Write down what you're going to do every day and then inch forward. Be appreciative for what you have. So many people forget about what they do have and focus on what they don't have, believing they're unlucky. 
You have your health. You have what money can't buy. So that's what creating your own luck is. It's right here. So true. And you also talk about doing things like take a chance, right? So if you're in a conversation, can you go into that a little bit, please? Are you kidding me? Take a chance. You have to risk failure to experience success. This is so easy. And one of the things I'm going to say without divulging the person's name is I talk to everybody. I talk to walls. I talked to somebody in February, two floors of an elevator, handed him my card because I was on a book tour. We said, hi, what are you doing? He said, what, what about you? Where are you from? And I said, I'm on a book tour. He said, what's the name of your book? Well, you have to create your own success. I had my card with the front of my book. And I said, on a book tour in Lauderdale. He said, let me have that. I took it. Three weeks later, he contacted me. Long story short, I'm helping a very, very, very well-known NFL player to bring out the book in him. Now, some people would say, wow. I'd say, there's no wow there. Take a chance. Be the first to say hello. Ask about them. And when they ask you about yourself, share. And let me tell you, it's the numbers game. You know, 1% of the time these things happen. However, you have to create the 1% in your life. Making your own luck means be open to new experiences. Go places that you've never been. Go early so that you find out about people. People are stunned. When you go to a restaurant, that person who is serving you has such a story in him or her. Be mm -hmm. open, learn, recognize this, and spin your wheel of success. It's so easy to do it when you are hungry, thirsty for knowledge about other people. Again, it's not about you. You create your own luck when you really care and are sincerely interested in others, and they, in turn, see you as interesting. Gosh, Anne-Marie, that was so, so right on and so true. So, <clears throat> so far, we're, you know, up to habit 15 in your book, and I really hope that people can appreciate and understand just how important each one of these steps are to create their own success because little by little if they practice these habits they will become successful there's no doubting it in closing Anne Marie what do you have to say um, so far about just anything we've talked about anything else you want to share with our listeners that you think is important well, the final thing I'd like to say, Carol Ann, is I want people to know, because this book is called How, uh, What self Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't, this really hasn't anything to do with the money. This is about the secrets, the ways to be successful. And so what happens is when you are caring about others, when you lend an ear, when you do things for other people, when you focus on your end goal is how you create your success. And the key is, of course, money is important. It's a form of barter. However, yes. this is what it takes to become successful. It's the habits. It's the ways. And this is what I want to leave people with. I want people to move forward on their self-made journey. You have the power. You simply want to make it happen. There's no magic. The magic is from within. Gosh, that's so true, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much. And don't forget, guys, next week uh, to join us again. And as you know, if you watch these videos, we upload every Monday before noon. We have a new series. So please subscribe. And if you can share, we would absolutely love and appreciate that as well. If you could just spread the word, Anne-Marie is really paying it forward by giving us all this valuable information and if you could share and pay it forward we would greatly appreciate that and don't forget we just had a winner for Anne Marie's book she sent it out today don't forget leave a comment below and your name will also be added to our generator and you stand a good chance of winning a copy too so please be sure to subscribe and join us again next week Anne Marie thank you so much always wonderful always so motivational thank you my pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening. Of course. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Now.